podcast where we talk about relationships, wealth, wellness, and personal growth. I am your host, Isabel, and I really wanted to talk about fear, anxiety, exposure therapy, and a couple of coping mechanisms to get through your anxiety. It's so easy to get caught up in the loop of anxiety, spiraling thoughts, the negative emotions, self-doubt, the what-ifs, and it can even get to the point where it loops. I definitely feel anxiety a lot when my heart starts racing, my palms get sweaty, I start feeling that fear creep in and I start overthinking non-stop one thought leads to another and it spirals and it spirals one thing i'm working on with my therapist is breaking that loop and being mindful of those spirals and understanding how to stop them anxiety is so common it's a normal human emotion and it's important to recognize that it does serve a purpose leaning into these hard emotions can really reveal a lot about yourself your desires and it's a great step to really discovering who you are at your core Does it feel like that when you're having severe anxiety? No, of course not. It sucks, and we've all been there. Sometimes it feels like at some point it doesn't end. My therapist gave me an analogy. She said, think of your emotions as a roller coaster. In order to get down from that peak, you need to let yourself feel the heights. Not repressing your emotions, not intellectualizing them, but really embracing them and feeling them and asking yourself, what is this trying to tell me right now? In order to come off the roller coaster, your body needs to feel the heights. Your body needs to feel the slow movements, fast movements, and everything in between. And that's really the only time you'll be able to let it go. At the course of human history, anxiety served as a fight or flight response. And it was a survival instinct that helped our ancestors recognize whether they were in a dangerous situation. Feeling this fear and anxiety helps them make decisions faster. The increased heart rate, the adrenaline, it forces our bodies to make a decision and move quickly. Back then, they had so many predators. They had so many uncertain natural elements, such as natural disasters, animal predators, even other people. And this anxiety and fear helped them stay really vigilant. In the modern day era, our environment is not like that anymore. Instead, we have more constructed workplaces, societal pressures, financial concerns. Our brains and our bodies have not fully adapted to this environment. And so instead of feeling fear of physical harm, we feel this fear and anxiety over psychological stressors of everyday problems. So knowing this, understanding that anxiety and fear serve their purpose, our brains are telling us this is scary. We don't know what will happen. It's uncertain. It's dangerous here. There might be harm done to us. We might die. It makes a lot of sense, right? Being uncomfortable is really challenging. It's hard, but it's also a zone where you won't grow. It's so interesting how humans aren't designed for happiness or growth, we're designed for comfort. But the only way you'll truly feel happy and truly feel like you're growing as a person is once you leave that comfort zone. Now, I kind of mentioned fight or flight, and that used to be me. I used to be a flight person. I used to avoid any situation that brought me discomfort. I used to put it at the back of my mind, and I tell myself I'll deal with it later. I used to not think about it at all. I used to just pretend it didn't exist, essentially completely avoidant, completely is just in flight mode. Again, avoiding your fears is normal. It's part of your brain coping with that discomfort. Ignorance isn't bliss, and just because you avoid something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Just because you don't know something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And just because you're not experiencing it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Avoidance is a dangerous tactic because your brain doesn't let you see the full picture and doesn't let you see reality. It's such a thin line to cross between avoidance and delusion and not confronting the truth prevents you from making decisions. It prevents your growth, prevents you from becoming the person that you want to be, and it enables this pattern of avoidance and fear and anxiety to continue the more and more you don't confront it. Now, I always say nothing changes if nothing changes. And so if you are an avoidant person, as I used to be, you will benefit from a strategy called exposure therapy. The goal of exposure therapy is to show you that your anxiety and your fear isn't that bad. For the most part, it only exists in your head. And typically, the outcome that you think will happen won't. It reduces the emotional and psychological responses connected to extreme anxiety and extreme fear and slowly and gradually exposes you to the things that you think are scary. It shows you that you do have a sense of agency and control over a potentially dangerous situation. Exposure therapy starts with slowly introducing yourself and taking baby steps into introducing things that are scary to you. 
If you listened to one of the previous podcast episodes, you know that I had this fear of doing things alone. Going to networking events alone scared me. Meeting new friends scared me. Being in a new city scared me. But I knew that I wanted to be a confident woman that had no fear of walking into a room and being authentic, owning my story, sharing my story with others, and connecting with people. I knew that I wanted connections. I knew that I wanted love. I knew that I wanted long-term and deep and lifelong relationships with women that inspire me. And I knew that in order to get that, I needed to be someone that wasn't afraid of putting my story out there. So in order to overcome this fear, in my case, I was a little bit extreme. I wanted to overcome this fear right away. And so I jumped fast. (laughs) I wanted to do something that excited me, something that I loved and something new. This goal of mine excited me so much that I started to value it over fear. And having that mentality of having faith over fear became easier and easier each time that I did it. The first time that I went into a networking event alone, my heart was racing. I was trying to talk myself out of going. I was sweating a lot. I was nervous. You know, I had a lot of thoughts like, what if these people don't like me? What if I feel like I don't belong here? What if I don't make any friends? A lot of feelings of self-worth and worthiness came up. Am I worthy enough to be in this space? Am I worthy enough to be in this room? And each time I asked myself that question, I always said yes. Yes, I am. Yes, I am worthy of my goals. Yes, I am worthy of my dreams. And so if I am going to be that woman that inspires other women to go for their dreams, it needs to start with me. At that networking event, I met one of my closest friends to this day. And one of the first things she said to me was, I haven't been to a networking event like this in over a year, and I was really scared to come tonight. And that instantly made me feel so seen. And it let me open up to her about my anxieties. And that was our first conversation. It was a conversation about anxiety. At the end of the day, we are all the same and we all feel the same thing. And being able to address it and talk about it openly helps ease and calm that. When you really connect with someone, it replaces that fear. And I would not have met her and we would not have become great friends if it wasn't for me showing up that day. Because of such a good experience of going into a networking event alone, I started doing it frequently. The more excited I became and the less fearful I became because of that constant exposure, because of the outcome that presented itself, I had to train my brain to experience that it isn't scary and that the outcome that happened is never that bad. But the purpose of exposure therapy shows you and shows your brain that through evidence, and through repeated exposure, you're training your brain to learn that it was not the original outcome that you expected it would be. This takes a lot of courage and it takes a lot of time. And something that my therapist makes me do is she makes me track my anxious predictions. So given a scenario that'll happen, she says, what do you think the outcome will be when you think of a scenario? Out of 10, what are your fears? What are your thoughts? And I would write this down before a scenario would happen. I would rate my anxiety out of 10. I would talk about the physical manifestations of my body so I know that it is anxiety. I talk about my thoughts and my fears and my emotions. And then I do exposure therapy to myself and I do the thing that scares me on that same sheet. I will track down my progress out of 10, out of 10. What are my fears now? What is the true outcome that happened? What are my thoughts and beliefs now that this has happened? What did I learn? And in my experience, that's the most important column. What did I learn section? And being able to track your progress and track how much better you've been doing and see and experience your anxiety going down, it really gives you the sense of hope and it shows you and something that I've learned doing this over and over again is that my expected outcome never happens. (laughs) It never ever happens whenever I do give myself exposure therapy. I always look at my expected outcome and I write down the true outcome. And in every single scenario, my expected outcome has never, ever happened. And so I really do encourage you to keep a spreadsheet and keep track of 
your expected outcomes, your fears, the feelings that you are manifesting, and then doing the exact same exercise once you've been exposed to this fear. Another important part of doing this exercise and experiencing this exercise is the practice of self-compassion and self-soothing. This process takes weeks, months, it can even take years for some people depending on how severe your fears and anxieties are and they won't go away overnight and there will be times where the fear and anxiety gets so bad that despite tracking your progress and knowing the outcome and doing this over and over again it might feel like you've regressed because of that fear because sometimes that fear gets too much when you do feel this and when this does happen i need you to give yourself a huge hug i need you to talk to yourself like the person you love the most and tell yourself that it's okay just because we feel this fear at one time doesn't mean we haven't made progress. In fact, we've made so much progress and this is only part of the journey into fully self-healing. Having self-compassion is such a sign of courage and strength because it builds so much resilience and shows yourself that you accept yourself whether or not you do make progress. Whatever era and whatever form of life that you are in, you still accept and love who you are and at the end of the day that builds confidence when you do encounter these moments i like to self-soothe by doing one thing for my five senses so for a sense of smell you can put on your favorite fragrance you can turn on a diffuser for essential oils you can light a candle something that smells so good and calming and relaxing to you that will take you out of your head and bring you back into the moment for a taste you can drink your favorite drink go to starbucks have your favorite smoothie eat your favorite food for me that is sushi sushi is my comfort food and ice cream i'll never say no to ice cream for a touch you can have a nice warm shower or a bath hug your loved ones Wrap yourself in a blanket, in a warm bed. For hearing, you can put on your favorite comfort artist. I love listening to Folklore and Evermore albums by Taylor Swift. Those albums just get me in a mood. They get me so soothed. Honestly, anything by Alina Baraz, but your favorite artist, your favorite podcast. You can even talk it out with a friend, family member, loved one. For sight, you can watch your favorite movie, you can go shopping, put on your favorite article of clothing, whatever that is that helps you self-soothe and brings you back to the present moment, that is exactly what you need to do when you feel fear or anxiety creeping in. We definitely need to talk about mindfulness and meditation, and that starts with Breathing really deep and holding your breath at the bottom of your lungs and at the top of your lungs when you do exhale. Breathing deep allows your brain to have access to the oxygen that it needs in order for the blood to circulate faster. This will slow down your heart rate if you're having a fast heart rate and you find yourself having trouble breathing or speaking. It lets you take a breath and take a pause and become mindful of the situation and bring you out of that loop and makes you realize that you are in this loop right now. And so taking a couple of deep breaths helps you relax and calm down. For me, I try my best to meditate three times a week. This not only helps my fear and anxiety, but it helps me visualize the person that I want to be, the dream life I want to create, the impact I want to make. It helps me visualize my life 10 years from now and it helps me talk to future me and ask myself advice and access that inner wisdom that I have within myself to make sure that I overcome all my limiting beliefs. There are so many amazing visualization meditations for this on YouTube and even on Audible. And there are lots of guided audiobooks as well, which I love. Another thing that I like doing is really just going outside and breathing deep as I go on a walk, try to clear my mind, remove myself from whatever situation that I'm in, and just feel my body move again. Being in tune with your body and letting yourself feel, letting yourself cry, letting yourself be angry, kind of that roller coaster that we discussed before is letting yourself feel those emotions so that way your body can release them. 
that is so, so, so important. Of course, journaling and affirmations are a must have in the road to self discovery. Writing down your ideas, writing down your thoughts, writing down the things that you've learned. If journaling by yourself is not your thing or you feel like it is a little bit more challenging, what I like to do is work with a workbook. I recently got a workbook called the Dialectical Behavior Therapy Skills Workbook. And it's definitely one of my favorite workbooks because I recently switched over from CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, to DBT, Dialectical Behavioral Therapy, which is more evidence-based, it's more challenging. And so this workbook really helps me set questions for self-discovery. It helps track progress. It helps with prompts and lessons and mindfulness. I really, really recommend any type of therapeutic workbook, depending on what therapy strategies work for you. There are so many. I find that I loved and needed that somatic and CBT therapy at the beginning of my wellness journey, but I do need something more challenging, which is why DBT is currently what I'm practicing. Finding hobbies and habits that will help you stay grounded and stay present and access this energy of peace and tranquility and creativity. Those are the hobbies and necessities I would recommend. So in addition to meditation, I absolutely love yoga, drawing, singing, playing with my dog, going to the beach. Of course, if you do have the capacity to seek a therapist, I highly recommend it. I've been working with a couple of therapists over the past two and a half years, and each therapist has been very, very valuable to me. I've learned so, so much. And overall, therapy is such an amazing tool for understanding why you are the way you are and how you can just become a better version of yourself. Just know that fear and anxiety do have benefits and the mindset of completely getting rid of it won't be helpful, but it is helpful to embrace it fully, to understand it more, to lean in with curiosity and explore these aspects of fear and really see how your fears play out without any judgment. What if that fear did happen? Say, what if that fear did come to life? Now what? What is in your control? What will change? What can you do to grow from this or learn from this? Now that the worst thing has happened, now what? And when you do explore these topics as you journal or meditate or think about these things, please do it without self-judgment without shame, without that little voice in your head saying, oh, that's weird. But just explore those thoughts. Let those thoughts come and go. Observe them. Know that you're not your thoughts and that through self-compassion and through embracing these emotions, you will grow and you will flourish and you will become the next version of yourself. I am excited for you to explore. I'm definitely curious what methods work for you to ease your anxiety. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you on next week's episode. Bye.